Welcome back here, Seven. Last video, we had a look at the animals of the Enchanted Forest. Now I'm going to see what do we have to do with those animals that I've made. I've made a, about six to seven animals and I've taken photos of them now. And here they are. They'll start with the unicorn. Okay, I've given them a common name. So here we are. I've given them a common name. So I've called this something um, called the miniature pink unicorn. Up above it, um, I've given it a scientific name and you'll will be doing in class at some stage um, what the scientific names are, but you can have as much fun with those as you want. So its scientific name um, is called Unicornus marshmallowus. Okay. After I've done that, I have described it. So I've got the picture over here. I've got two pictures, in fact. And I've then simply described what I see. So this creature has its habitat in the um, trees of the enchanted forest. Okay, so I'm telling you about where it lives. It's approximately 25 to 30 centimetres in height, so it's a small unicorn. It has pink we uh, wings and a fluffy uh, blue furry body. So there's our fluffy blue furry body. And it eats the pine needles of the holiday pine, where it mostly takes its home. Okay, so it mostly lives in that tree. Now, when I first wrote this little paragraph, I just had one or two little word, um, sentences up here. But I've had to come back. As I've been more and more creative, I keep on adding to this description. Um, so don't um, you, you create a, a Google Doc and I will send you the actual um, the Google Doc which has this pro forma in it so you can actually just add to this. Um, so don't worry about creating this table or anything like that. Um, and what you do is you just simply keep on adding more and more information and having fun because what there is no such thing as an enchanted forest for me, so I'm making this all up. Um, and you can have as much fun with your zoo as well. So use, let your creativity run wild. After I've described it, um, I've also had to um, classify it. We will be doing classifications in um, class, so you might not be able to do this yet, so don't worry about it too much. But um, my little unicorn over there has a backbone, so it's called a vertebrate. And it also has fur and it breastfeeds its young. It gives birth to um, live um, young. So it also classifies itself as a mammal. So you have to somehow classify it. It could be a slug, so therefore it would be a mollusk. It could be that you've created a snake, which means it's a reptile. Then after your, um, you've done that, you're going to have a look at the adaptations. These are the things that help an animal survive in its habitat, in its ecosystem, okay? Now you notice that I've got some pink and some blue on this. And why did I choose those two colors? Well, I did not and that's all I had at home. Um, but I've retrofitted an explanation to it and it has to do with the holiday tree. So it has large pink wigs for flying from branch to branch on its home in the holiday pine. Notice the pink and blue are used to camouflage. Now camouflage means it blends in to the holiday tree. And you, I've just said, see the holiday tree. And there's a picture of it in a few moments. It needs to hide. The reason why it needs to hide is it needs to um, hide from its main predator called the common pixie. And you saw how terribly ferocious that, common, that pixie looked in a few moments. Um, so um, it's developed this ability to, um, also it has developed an ability to digest the prickly and tinsely needles of the holiday tree. And during summer, it also eats the pink fruit of the holiday tree. Um, and the unicorns then distribute the seeds of the holiday tree through digestion. So they eat them and then poo them out. Um, food chain information, um, it's a primary consumer. So um, it, we know that a primary consumer consumes a um, a producer. And what does it do? It eats the needles of the holiday tree. Okay, so that's the, um, that's that one. So let's go and have a look at the holiday tree. This is the holiday tree. Um, its proper name is the common name that everyone should be calling it is called the holiday pine. And its scientific name is Pinus ex massa. Okay, it's Christmas tree. Okay. Um, now what's description? Once again, you simply look over here and you describe it. 
and then add to your description with some um, with some other information. So this is the main tree in the Enchanted Forest. It grows to 20 metres tall, so it's a very tall tree. Um, and that's the reason why the unicorn has to fly. A green tinsley pine, which has blue flowers, see blue flowers, and also pink fruit. It is home to many animals, most notably the pink uh, unicorn, the miniature pink unicorn, also known as pink um, unicornus marshmallowus. Um, its pine needles are also the are many food sources of the unicorn. I'll read that properly. Its pine needles are one of the food sources of the unicorn that makes nests in its branches. The blue flowers attract insect creatures known as the exp um, espresso pone. We saw that one um, in the last video, and I'll show you a picture in a tick. The espresso pode pollinates its blue flowers, and the blue flowers have nectar that is eaten by the espresso pode. Okay. Um, what is it? Its classification? It's a plant. Okay. It's the enchanted pine tree. Adaptation, well, its tinselly needles are hard to eat. And that means that not many animals would like to eat it. Um, the notable exception, of course, is the unicorn. And it has developed blue flowers that attract the espresso pod. So that's how we fertilize it. And what is it? Because it's a plant, it's a primary producer. Going through them, you can see all of these. Now I'll share this document with you so that you can have a read of them later on as well. I don't want to be here giving you a reading lesson. Um, but here's the, the slug that I showed you here. It's it's common name. I've called it this. Remember um, when I a few moments ago when I had the video, I hadn't given it a name yet. So I've called it the wing slug. Okay. Now wing things, um, what's a wing thing? I've, oh, a pegasus is a winged horse. So I've made it slimus pegasus. Nothing to do with a horse, but I've just decided to call it that. You can um, uh, read stuff there. Remember, you just described, so it has eyes able to see around corners. It's, it's approximately 10 centimetres in length, and it's on the, the floor of the enchanted forest. Tell me where it lives and so on. And what does it eat? It eats the fairy ring, the common green cow water as well. Okay. Um, it doesn't have a backbone and it's a slug and slugs are mollusks. So I've called, I've classified it as an invertebrate and a slug or as a mollusk. Then I've talked about what adaptations it has. What little evolutionary tricks has it developed over millions of years to be able to um, uh, survive in the enchanted forest? So it doesn't get eaten by all of its, um, its uh you know, the nasty people that are out to eat it, and also which makes it more successful. Um, though it hasn't got large, um, though it has large wings, it cannot fly. Um, but why does it have wings? The wings are to attract others for mating. So that is an adaptation that makes it more successful. If you can attract more mates, you can have more babies and more, um, more organisms. It eats the, um, both pixie dust and it also eats fairy rings. So fairy rings, as we all find out in a few moments, is one of the plants on the forest floor. So it's a primary consumer. So it eats the plants. Uh, so here is the uh, fairy ring. I've called it the stinging fairy ring because I told you it had spikes on it. Um, and I've called it the circulus fay as its scientific name. Um, so there's a description. It's 15 centimetres tall, barb spikes, red poisonous leaves. Its classification is a plant. Um, so here's adaptation, those red and orange things are poisonous um, and it's also because they're red and orange, they signal to other animals not to eat them and it would be a primary producer. So I'm just making things up here but using my understanding of science to um, flesh out some of these fabulous creatures. This is the most dangerous creature. This is called the apex predator. This is one that eats um, the, sec uh, the primary uh, consumers. So this one actually eats the unicorn. And so she's, um, oh, sorry, I shouldn't call her she because it's it's a pixie. It's both male and female. Um, and it's called, its proper name is the common queen pixie. But even though it's called common queen, it just means there's a lot of them, um, they're, uh, um, it's still a formidable um, unicorn eating machine. It's 40 centimetres tall. It has green and with fur. So if it's, of course it's got fur, it means it's a mammal. Um, it has yellow hair um, up the top. You can see the yellow hair and a yellow apron area. Um, 
It's got large orange poisonous claws. You can see that. I'm just describing what I can see and I've made into my stuff here. And it eats all forms of unicorns and it also eats the slugs. I've added that later on because um, I needed something in my food web to eat the slugs. Um, remember, when you come here, have fun. Go back and add more, uh, more interconnections. Remember, it's all about interconnectedness, all of this. Um, so you can say it's got um, the male of the species, which is not pictured here. This is the female of the species. Um, does not have the yellow bonnet and apron. Um, and it's the yellow bonnet and apron make it more successful in catching unicorns um, because it blends in better to the, um, the tree. Uh, so the males find it difficult to catch them. So we might have an adaptation where the female has to catch for the male because the male is totally useless at catching unicorns. So it's... Um, it's a mammal, it has fur, and um, I've said because it's a mammal, it should have breasts which suckles it young. It should also give um, birth to live young because all mammals do that. Here are some of its adaptations. It's got tinsely growths out of its head and hips. You can see them there. And that's to help it blend in with the holiday tree, making it easier to sneak up on the, uniform, uh, the unicorn. Okay, Its green colour also helps it be camouflaged with the pine tree. So there we are. There are adaptations. Um, it's a secondary consumer. In other words, it eats primary consumers. So it eats a unicorn. Okay. Going down, these are all this. I haven't, I've created this one here. Miss um, has um, named it these two things here. But I haven't got around to actually describing it properly yet and doing all the adaptations and so on. This does take time. So you, um, you keep on coming back and add them to. Once you get some better ideas and some more fun in your head and you say, oh, this looks like an A-shaped and the reason why it's A-shaped is because and you, you, you make up things about it, okay? Um, this is the common cowart, cowart, okay, a cowart. It's like a liverwort. Um, it's green, so it's the um, Latin greens are vert, which means green, so cowart vertus. Um, just make, um, make your Harry Potter shine on here. Um, and I haven't done any of the descriptions or the classification yet because I haven't got around to it. So um, I would describe what it looks like. This is that look like a cow's udder. These two are photosynthetic, large spherical um, ball-like things at the back. Um, and it six sticks up from the, the floor. I haven't said how tall it is. These are very small plants. It just looks large. Okay. This is the one here, oh, Miss has named it now. I, I asked Miss to name this overnight. Um, she's called it Harry's Bane. Um, that's the name of the animal. And this is Potterus toxica. So apparently it's toxic, um, it's poisonous. So it's um, Harry Potter's poison. So yeah, we'll, we'll make more stuff about it later on. So remember you don't have to do um, everything at once. You go back and add things. Here's, 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 here's the rainbow snake. Um, once again, I haven't as yet put all, filled in all the information about it. And here is the espresso pod. This is one of the, um, the little creatures that are on the floor. And its proper name, scientific name, is called the Cafe Podus Espressodi or whatever that, Espressodi. Um, you have fun with those names as well. Um, I haven't described it yet. And this is what the project's all about. So your first job is to um, uh, make your creatures and then photograph them, put them in. But um, don't be afraid of going back and say, oh, I need this, uh, like this one over here. I added these spiky stuff at the end because I needed it to protect itself. I added on the, um, the this, this is the Christmas tree. Um, on this Christmas tree, I added pink and blue things um, because I wanted the unicorn to be able to blend in. So I've gone back and added to my trees and then added to my descriptions. So we want to have our animals um, living um, in this environment and they can't be picked off, I mean, preyed upon easily. They have to survive somehow. Okay, so um, you will get a copy of this um, this document here, This um, all of this, so you get uh, read through it and get some ideas yourself. You might decide that you would like to do um, a different uh, ecosystem. Well, you, you are to do a different ecosystem. Please don't do an enchanted forest. That's Otherwise, it's just copying mine. Come up with a, um, a type of uh, 
um, ecosystem that interests you. You might be a fan of the Frozen movies. You might be a, fra- a fan of um, the um, uh, Beauty and the Beast um, movies or whatever, and you can have a Beauty and the Beast um, zoo or something like that. Find something that you are interested in. You might, might be interested in cars and therefore you want to have a different type of um, enchanted car um, forest or something like that. Up to you. Um, let your imagination run wild. The other option at the end is if you don't want to make up, you have to then um, use real animals. And I will be posting a video um, very similar uh, to um, Miss Potter, who's done a real video as well with real animals. It's much more difficult to make the real animals um, because they have to resemble real animals. Here, this is just stuff I had lying around the house while we were in isolation. Okay, so uh, this is the second of the three videos. Um, the third video is how to build the, um, the web, the, um, the food web that comes from this. Okay.